In high school, we played a game. Many years later, we got back together to play one more. Little did we know, this time, the game was real. Join me, Aram Vartian, on Start Playing Games for a brand new type of fantasy role-playing. In Die RPG, you play a group of real-world, deeply flawed adults who are transported into a fantasy realm via a predatory, sinister role-playing game. The game transforms your characters into paragons and rewards them with strange and frightening powers. In Die RPG, you are confronted with your truest desires and deepest fears. And only you can decide when the game is over. Check out all of my available Start Playing Games campaigns at aram.gay. My name is Aram, and my pronouns are he, him. I'm the producer of the Dungeons & Dragons podcast, God's Fall. My name is Dylan. My pronouns are he, him, and I'm a physicist from Canada. Welcome to Kill Kill Every Every Monster. Monster. Last time on Kill Every Monster... And now the temple that's around you, to everyone, it all changes. You see it cleaned up. You see it in its heyday. You see it underwater. With these, look like even possibly precursors to merfolk and Lokatha that are there, that almost look more beautiful, more radiant, more happy, more everything than they are today, like in their glory there. And you see this temple and it expands out until you see like a city, an underwater city filled with this civilization. And then you see these, the water get dark. You see it get murky, you see everything get dimmer you feel it's like you feel inside what it feels like in a horror movie when the music changes and then you see things coming out of the darkness and you see battle and you see war and you see these paladins and clerics wielding versions of this sword spears, tridents that are versions of this, whatever unique quality these weapons have. And they lose the battle. And these creatures come out. And this god has manifested itself personally to help defend this city. And some horrifying ritual is performed and captures this god and seals it down here and cuts it off like mind blank from being divinely detected by Saloon or anyone else. And it's been trapped here for a millennia or more. And then you see writing on the walls of these temples and you're starting to be able to understand it. Like that knowledge is dropped into your mind. And just as you're drawn to some of that language, the illusion goes away. You can feel the knowledge, you can feel the knowledge drain from your mind. Susie, I'd like you to roll me a religion check. Seven. Nailed it. Something's off about the spell. The way it was portrayed, the way it was performed in that vision, and the way magic works don't quite align in your head, but it's almost like trying to fit a circular peg in a square hole. Like, you can. 
but it doesn't fit right. Yeah, I think uh, she's... There's that in the back of her head, like something that's that's not entirely right. That wasn't quite how that should have looked or should have gone. But I think she's a little thrown off um, by that that sensation of losing that knowledge, losing her knowledge, losing her uh, her mind is like could be the worst thing that would ever happen to Alana. Losing everything she studied years for. So I think she's a little like shaken by that at the moment to to really pick up on like, hang on that was fucky um so she's gonna you know like so there's a little suspicion but she's still enthralled and engrossed and and that whole you know uh, you can help me find saloon like a little bit of her is like i can i could do that that could be me oryx what you saw and all that what i think that you took in and you can correct me if i'm wrong you saw warriors with this weapon fighting to save lives, to defend people. Heroes. Yes, thank you. That's the word. You saw heroes. And that feeling got turned up to 11, touching you with, are you a good person? I don't know. Are you like these people? That's only a question you can answer. Do you feel like this is what you would want? Is this the kind of person you would like to embody? Be the hero you want to see out there. <laughs> so Oryx, he got this sword after as a way to fend off bullies. And when he sees this vision, what he does he doesn't see the politics, he doesn't see the religion of paladins and people serving their god or the faith or the the passion or any of that. What he sees is a bunch of defenders fending off some bullies. And I see the bullies pushing through and, and, and kicking this victim while they're down. And yeah, absolutely, I want to embody those defenders. And as somebody who, uh, you know, this this god has, or, or being or whatever it is, has has stuck up for me and, and defended me. And this this moment of, of purpose and realization is like, yeah, this is this is why I'm here. I'm I don't need to have myself protected anymore. And now I can stand up for somebody else. As the attention shifts between Alana and Oryx, I've sleight of hand pointed that wand at the god, and I'm going to detect magic on them. Mm. Trying to do it so I'm not noticed. Gotcha. Roll your sleight of hand. Hey, something I'm good at. 15 plus 7 is 22. If it's about lying or surviving, <laughs> I'm fantastic. <laughs> and Rich, I'm going to give you the perception, but I'm going to give you the disadvantage on it because you aren't here. Technically, I can make all of those perception checks through this illusion in the same way as if I was there. But then I'm I'm wrong. Make the check. Ooh, that's a good one. 18? This is something where you know exactly what you're doing. You let the wand sort of fall down this the sleeve a little bit, and you're actually holding, like, the bulb in your palm, so the wand is running up your forearm. Yeah. Tilting your hand a little bit, just enough that you can see the glass orb. You can see sort of the output. What did you roll again? 22 total. <laughs> okay. I'm going to hold this up to the screen. I have a plus 10. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, no. I rolled a 23. I've got the bulb in my hand, which means the wand is pointing up my sleeve. So I've had to turn slightly with my back to you while casually pretending that I haven't, as I'm just glancing at a mirror in my other hand to see what color the bulb has changed. Then, Aram, you rolled high enough that I'm going to say you get you get the spell off. You can right. do it before but you I notice. Caught. Yeah, absolutely. And you pick up two magics. I'm going to give him what he reads, and then I want you can give him the results of your perception. Perfect. Two schools. Enchantment. Illusion. So I don't think I see it, right? I think I'm already inside your guys' heads. 
Right. And so you're really good at that was a great role. But even though I'm concentrating on this this phantasmal illusion, I get that something something's happening over like oh wait what thing's happening over here. Yeah. And so I I, I, I kind of get that you're not a hundred percent on board yet. But I maybe I don't but I think you rolled so well that I don't think I know exactly what you did, but I just get that impression. So I don't I don't stop you. You get the information, but you and I are like eyeballing each other right now. My aura is not quite right as compared to the others. <laughs> My mind's eye is eyeballing your mind's eye. Right? Yeah. All three of your mind's eyes are <laughs> right. on me. Exactly. You got one for each of us. <laughs> like yeah, the one eye, you true. know. That's no true. one's out of sight. That's true. I think it has three eyes. I think it. I think it's got three eyes and a little triangle, like like it's got its mind's eye open. Side note: something we didn't talk about that I meant to mention with the Ableth is that I've always pictured them, even though they've never been drawn this way. I've always pictured them with that angler fish kind of thing coming up, and that glowing orb is like the center of all their illusion powers. Like like everything kind of gets generated from that spot. It That's flashes right. brightly, it draws you in. It's the first mm -hmm. light out of the darkness. So I've always just kind of pictured them with that. Ooh, I love that. Rather than the forehead, I think, because your illusion is supposed to always be of you, mm. I don't think you can get rid of the third eye. So sometimes you have to hide it. And I think it's in your mouth. Oh, my mouth's been closed the whole time. So it's one of those things where he does that and you kind of give him the look of like, oh, it's the it's the unconscious human gesture of I see what you're doing that just mm -hmm. exposes enough like the lids opening, except with teeth. Mm, interesting. <laughs> Super gross. Interesting. That's so messed up. <laughs> it's a horrible image, but it's a horrible monster. OK, it's like alien. But when the mouth opens, instead of another mouth, it's an eyeball. <laughs> Yeah, it's bad. It's bad. I'm We're glad, I'm glad that was you more. and not me. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Ram, you also do see this, this glory. You can feel like it's trying to tap into this thing that it knows is in there, mm -hmm. right? Look at the glory. Serve a newly risen God. Right, except that all the magic is enchantment and illusion. And if one, if I know anything it's i know another liar i i can spot another you know liar a bullshitter mm -hmm. something's going on why would a god have to pretend anything something's going on in this moment i know that oryx has something besides that sword that's powerful and he's very focused i'd want to whip that off his back. I basically, I'm going for the wand of wonder. I want to take that wand from you and like then jump a few steps back with it outstretched and pointed towards this so-called God. And I'm going to challenge them on that. Alex, it's your wand. Do you want to fight him on it? Yeah, no, he can just have have this one. I am, I'm focused. I am like in this yeah. communion with this being. Um, and the wand is just like, it's one of the most recent things I put in the bag. And so it's just like, it's poking out the top of just a little bit. Um, yeah. It doesn't quite fit in there with everything else. And so he's, it's, it's not too hard for him to just get that up. Ilana and Oryx, you get something, basically this knowledge, this understanding downloaded into you, okay? You see the, the, the image kind of comes back into your mind of this big battle you found, you saw. And it zooms in on certain, on a couple of interactions. And you start to see that some of these warriors, these holy warriors, were clearly mind controlled, traitors, something. They're doing things that undermined things that were happening there. And that control was coming from these creatures coming out of the darkness. Like these things, these things manipulated these heroes into betrayal. And it's it's telling you, it tells you, this is a thing that happened to me. This is why I was trapped. I can give you the ritual to free me. I can give you the knowledge to help bring me back into the world. 
to help fight these creatures because they still exist. For example, <laughs> and he's grabbed the wand of wonder out. He stepped away. He's aiming it at me. He's being mind controlled by the creatures to keep me here. That was just in those two's head, right? So you don't know what's how you're like, hey, we're all on the same side here, right? Just showing them basically a, pro a projection. I wasn't invited to the movie. No. This is no god. It is surrounded in magics of lies and betrayal. What would you be hiding from us? I don't say anything else to either one of you. It is now your turn to choose. I have no reason to defend myself. You've seen the truth. You decide. So Bentley would hear from behind him the rustling of scale mail oh, and shit. the clank <laughs> of a shield and the heft of the spear as Alana pulls from her back her shield, which is uh, one of those like big Greek hoplite shields, the little yeah. divot in the top, so it's like a crescent moon. And she has a silvered spear and she levels it at Bentley. What do you think you're doing? This creature is peaceful. Just lying to you. I can show you. And he's just like, and he's like a, his thumb hovering over this brass button on the edge of the wand. It's really good that Bentley's been so trustworthy the whole time they've known each other. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's lying to you. I can see its magics. And he would extend the other wand to you. So he's got one wand pointed at the god. He's in the middle of both of you and he's extending his wand of magic detection to you that has a single charge left. Ooh. This is where Oryx would also kind of get involved. He'd point his sword at, at Bentley. But who here is the thief? Who here is the untrustworthy one? That sword you are holding is not its sword. It is connected to you and manipulating you. I am just trying to keep us all safe, my friend. As he's like doing a three person standoff, <laughs> with two wands. <laughs> and he flips it around in his fingers and tries to hand you the bulb. I think Alana will step forward um, because of that niggling little thing in the back of her head, you know, that that magic wasn't quite right earlier. Maybe this is just Bentley. Maybe this is just Bentley. Um, but, you know, science, science. we got to find out for science. <laughs> for so science. she's going <laughs> to come forward and she'll take a spear into her other hand and take that wand and just do a little gesture. <laughs> As this has all been happening, I'm going to use a, a layer action. So water has been slow, uh, a, a tendril of water has been slowly leaking out of the pond along like, it, the whole place is worn. There's divots, there's things, there's water dripping. It's really difficult to see, but the tendril is snaking its way toward Bentley's leg <laughs> in, that, in this water. I'm waiting to feel the reaction from Alana about what, she, I'm not gonna do anything yet, but I'm prepping to have to do something. And I know exactly where you're going with this one. I'm very <laughs> happy about this. All right. Susie, mm -hmm. I'm just going to directly ask you. Do you take the wand? Yes. Rich, do you do it? She reaches out to take the wand from him. Yeah, I do it. Aram, strength saving throw. Strength? Fuck. <laughs> God damn it. 19 plus one is 20. Oh shit, all right. As soon as you grab the the wand of detection out of his hand and you, 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 you take it, I wait till you look at it, you make the final decision and you point it in my direction. The tentacle wraps around Bentley's leg and yanks him off his feet. And drags him toward the water. Oh shit. <laughs> I had just been inspired to defend people and I think that that instinct does kick in and he he's getting pulled in and heroes don't kill people and and he just reaches out and grabs him and he he looks down at, at Bentley and and says we need to trust each other trust me 
I do. And then I point that wand at this thing and I fire <laughs> without hesitation. <laughs> Alana, in the interim, like you see that he was completely right. There is illusion and enchantment. You know enough about magic to know that this is a completely generated image. This is not a projection. This is a generated effect. The enchantment I'm leaving tenuous because there's a telepathy thing going on, right? You know, it's not immediately recognizable. You cool with that, Rich? That sound good? I am, absolutely. I'd like to yes and on Oryx a bit too. I think I, I think you grab you grab Bentley and you're holding on to him. He's being pulled in, right? It, the, the pulling doesn't isn't going to stop from me. I think you'd have to cut that tendril of water. Right. And also, there's no guarantee to Oryx that, like, this tendril is the being that, like, like there's, there, like, there, there's some kind of tide coming up. There's some kind of other thing going on. And he just, he saves them. This is a wet, dark tendril creeping out of a pool. Yeah, so I, I, I cut the tendril, um, and the, the water cuts, like, like butter. Like, there's just, like, a moment where it, like... It's smooth, but there is resistance. Right. Water shouldn't have resistance. Here's the irony of that sword. I gave you that sword. The sword is real. The sword is divine power from a dead god. The sword hurts me more than anything else. So you cut the tendril and the image of this god morphs like a shaky camera. And in your heads, you're hearing a an involuntary screech quick before I can catch it. But clearly it was me. Clearly it was this image. Clearly this divine sword hurt me who theoretically had created it. When Oryx said, we need to trust each other. And I was like, I do. I turn towards Alana just before I fire this wand and I ask for Salune's blessing and I point the wand. So I would actually like Ilana to roll mm -hmm. the D100 to see what happens. <laughs> yeah, at this point, uh, Alana is like, oh, Salune, would you please come through? So that's going to be a 52. Oh my God. You enlarge the target as if you had <laughs> cast enlarge or reduce if the target can't be affected by the spell or you didn't target the creature you become the target there is no creature you become the target aram that i get big <laughs> <laughs> I told you not to put this on me. <laughs> I think that it, I think the beam goes out, it hits the water. The water does this thing where it's, it's like a, it's almost like a gel or an ooze more because this is, this water has been thickened by the, by this God. Yeah. To trap the Aboleth in the water in a neutral state that it can't die and it's just stuck here. And so it hits the water and bounces back because it's got to have some kind of magic resistance to keep the Aboleth from freeing itself. And it ends up hitting, hitting Bentley. If this one had seven charges, Flumfrey used one. I've now used one. It's got five left. And okay. I'm now huge. Well, large. <laughs> well, large, yes. I am large. Tentacles start coming out of the water. Shit. And it's coming out of the water. And there's a dramatic shift from divine glory to horror movie. If my action was to use the wand, my movement is to go behind Oryx. Then we're going to roll for initiative. All right, I got a 10 for initiative because she's not a fast lady. I only got an 8, so. I uh, rolled a 16. I think it has more to do, my high six, my high and higher initiative roll, I think, has more to do with just you guys, what the heck is happening right now? Three plus three is six. I am distracted. We both we We're all amazing at this. <laughs> Rich, you're up first. Yeah, so tentacle attack. On initiative count 20, do you want to take a lair action? You cannot immediately take the the pull one. Can't use that lair action again until you've used a different one. 
You know what? I think I'm going to say that 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 was my initiative 20 layer action that I used. That's fair. That's fair. I respect that. Okay. So Bentley, Bentley, you're you stepped behind Oryx. I just immediately step behind Oryx. Actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to hit Bentley and um, Alana first. So Bentley first. Yeah, you've got a ten foot reach. So as you explode out of this pool, you absolutely can basically swing around Oryx. Twenty one. Um, yeah, so twenty one does definitely hit me. Uncanny dodging this. So it only does eight to you, but you do need to make a DC 14 con save. 13 plus two is 15. Boy, that was close. And I'm just going to go ahead and have that damage. Okay. You take four. When it hits you, when the tentacle wraps around you and and it just, it smacks into you and there's, it has uh, suckers on it. And the suckers, like a, like an octopus, the suckers inside themselves have little ridges, like, like uh, saw blades. Gross. And so it grabs a hold of you and, and kind of slashes into you. And there's mucus left behind. But the mucus starts to spread across your body. Oh. It's it's almost looks like a very slow ooze that starts to ooze across your body. But there isn't much of it. And it kind of thins itself out too much too fast. Uh, Alana, you got an 18, which I'm probably going to miss you, right? An 18? 18 mm-hmm. to hit. It does hit. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm one. <laughs> That's 12 points of damage. And a DC 14 con save. Okay, con save. Okay, that's a 17 on the con save. You're fine. So a very similar thing happens. It, it's oozed all over the armor. It tries to crawl in between the scales of your scale armor, but there just isn't enough of it. I do get a third attack, which I will uh, aim at Bentley again, because I'm not hitting my champion. I got 19 plus 9, so 28. Will also hit me, yes. This only does 7 points of damage, but con save again. Okay, con save again. 14 plus 2 is 16. Okay, you're good. I'm going to fail one of these soon. So it's flailing around, but like its tentacles yeah, are much yeah. drier than it used to be because it's just been All trapped right. for so long. It's just not able to get its stuff out. And it, and, it, and it says telepathically inside Oryx's mind, everything I have done for you is true. Everything I did for you was for you. You know how people would react to me the way that I look. I had to approach you in a different way or they would attack me without hearing anything I had to say. Help me. Alana, it's your turn. (laughs) Alana is going to rush forward um, towards these tentacles, bolstered by her faith in Salune, seeing uh, seeing, uh, Bentley become a large lad now. But she moves in front, she brings up her shield, she brings up her spear, she levels it towards the creature, and she casts Spirit Guardians. And as she brings her shields up, a a phalanx of similarly armored uh, elves in uh, glistening silver armor, like, appear beside her, and they all link shields into a big shield wall. Fantastic. Hell yeah. So good. So that's my turn. Oryx, what do you want to do? Oryx. Oryx is a conflicted guy right now. I've done my job. The divine being has disappeared. These tendrils come out of the water. They're attacking the people he's been traveling with the past little while. This voice inside is saying that, you know, people are, this is his, his form and people react this way. He just wants this to stop. And his first instinct, again, just like when Bentley was going to fall into the water is to first defend the people that he's next to. So exactly like he did with the the water before, Alana's got that that phalanx. So I'm going to let them take care of that. He's going to try to help Bentley again. So these tentacles come up um, and he's going to try to like cut a couple of those just like he did the water uh, a moment ago. Roll your attack. Nat one. I rolled uh, as a total of eight. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> oh, 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 oh no i think you want to do the thing and you just you you can't you can't do it like you're just you're still conflicted 
Yeah, I like I raise the sword over my head and I go to bring it down and I just it kind of just stops halfway and it's like what 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 do I do? And and I start there's kind of a secondary instinct of whenever I don't know what to do, I just start reaching out again of like what do I do? What's next? Help me. The child kind of comes back again. Rich. So um one of my uh legendary actions that I can take I'm just going to use tail swipes. Great. I I missed with all I missed with all three. You would have hit, but Oryx lifted the sword and that like you just flinched. You Ooh, just like there's you we just both you just flinched. flinched. Each other. Mm-hmm. Right. And so what Oryx has done is Oryx has gotten up and like bend the guy to like separate a fight basically to kind of get in the way to protect me and i'm the asshole that uses that to my advantage to get a sucker punch in so as soon as he does that and as soon as um the abolith or as soon as these tentacles flinch i would try to do a sneak attack roll an attack can i do it with the wand no, that's not how it works. <laughs> okay, then, okay, then I oh, would no. just... No, you can hit me with the wand. It does 1d3 bludgeoning. <laughs> he might snap the wand. I would just sneak attack, stab this tendril that hesitated. I'm, I'm sorry, I wouldn't stab it. I would shoot it with my crossbow because that's what I do. I am a coward and I fight things at a distance. <laughs> that's going to be a 16 plus 8 is 24. Yeah, that's a hit. Yeah. All right, do I get my sneak attack? Yep, uh, you are in territory where it's like next to someone else. You, all, all your conditions are filled. All right, seven plus four is 11 plus five die six. 20 points, so 31 points. Of, I just, there's like one of those little suckers, like just on the outside edge, I managed to fire at one of them and it just goes right in the center like a bullseye. Ouch. I'll use my bonus action to reload. All right, coming back around. Rich, legendary action. Or not legendary action, lair action on 20. I think this rage, this anger, particularly triggered by this shot that just did 30-something damage to me as well. There's a pulse that comes out of the water. It's just a psychic force that comes out of the water. So I'm going to say it goes at Bentley, because he's the one that hit me. So DC 14 uh, wisdom save. I have a plus zero, and I rolled a three. Seven psychic damage. Oh, my feelings. <laughs> God, you're the worst. And you you feel all of that glory and destiny and everything that was coming up in you earlier is a lie. It's been a lie since you were a child. Your mother was lying to you for her own glory I am trying to completely undermine your ego. Yeah, I don't know what power is. This is what power is. I'm looking at power right (laughs) now. How could I ever even think I could face something like this? How could I ever think I was anything compared to something like this? Exactly. Speaking of which, Rich, it's your turn now. I'm so insignificant. You're goddamn right you are. I forgot the, the qualities of the spell that you cast, Alana. So it's Spirit Guardians, um, if a creature enters the area, you're going to make a wisdom saving throw. If you fail the save, you take uh, 3d8 radiant damage. Is it half on failed or half on a success? Uh, yeah, on a success, you take half. Uh, DC 15. I'm going to attack you specifically with all three of my tentacles. Cool. First, you got to make that save. I'm going to go ahead and fail that save um, because I did. So oh. what's tell me the damage? All right, three d eight. That is fourteen radiant damage. It's just you're lunging forward. Like yeah, there's a phalanx there, but you are so full of rage and hate in this moment that you just fling yourself onto spears. Yeah, just crush the shield wall. I only hit you once. The other two were the other two were clear misses. Fourteen points of damage and the con save again. Okay, ow! Uh, con save five. Fantastic! Thank you so much for that. You're fine. I'm sure nothing happens to you. 
There's a lot of slime coming on you. It's gross. That's it. Mm-hmm. It's, otherwise, I'm sure it'll be okay. Uh, your skin seems a little paler, but it's dark in here. Maybe that's just the, the light. It's fine. The tentacles slam against the shield wall. She gets hit. She's covered in mucus. She wipes some from her face and uses, as she brings her arm back up, she casts Guiding Bolt at third level. Let's get spicy. Okay. So that's going to be a 18 to hit. It's going to hit. Yeah, I have a, I have a 17 AC. Yeah. So you're going to take... Oh my god, that's a lot of ones. Uh, 15 radiant damage. And somebody gets advantage? The next attack roll made against you will get advantage. Because you're shining now in the light of Saloon. All the bio... I think all the bioluminescence just flares up and you can see my entire unpleasant looking body all three eyes the teeth everywhere and the eyes are fully glowing like there's like pulses coming off of me of psychic energy. teeth starting mildly outside of the mouth and then spiraling in like a lamprey eel yes Ooh. rich legendary action oh i just do a tail swing. i just crush them clean miss for sure that guiding bolt threw me off uh alex the bioluminescence lights up in the water and I can see its form and I have my sword kind of coming down and I hesitate and then I see that and that is what I kind of need to kind of push me over the edge there. I take all that fear and I channel it into a spell, uh, enervation, and these weird these tendrils, uh, they look pretty much the same as the tendril that came up to grab Bentley, come out from my sword um, and lash out towards the monster that I see in the water. As you do that, the voice inside your head, the, the comforting voice from the very first time that you got helped and protected says, Flumfrey believed in you. Flumfrey wanted you to do the right thing. Do the right thing. On that note, uh, make a dexterity saving throw. Two giant walls of tentacles, right, rise up against each other, and then it's just a slap fight. As they <laughs> just, just swinging at each other. <laughs> uh, I rolled an eight. <laughs> I am not dexterous. <laughs> a tendril of inky darkness reaches out from you, touching a creature you can see within range to drain life from it. Uh, the target must make a dexterity saving throw. On a failed save, the target takes 48 necrotic damage. And until the spell ends, you can use your action on each of your turns to automatically deal another 48 necrotic damage to the target. Um, Spell ends if you use your action to do anything else. That's fantastic. How much damage do I take? 48. Not relevant at the moment, but you also heal half the damage you inflict. Uh, That would be nice if... um, If you had taken damage, yeah. If I had taken damage. I rolled 25. Why would I, why would I, why would I hurt the protagonist of this, of this fight, this story? For cinematic purposes, can we say that his tendrils have like wrapped into yours, they're battling against each other, and you have kind of been pulled now to the surface. So you are breaking the surface of the water, and we are seeing you revealed in your true form. And I still think the the bioluminescence is going off. The glowing spiritual guardians are filling this place oh, with yeah. light. This is like, a bright place. Even the darkness of the enervation spell is shedding a black light. Rich, mm-hmm. who are you hitting with the tail attack? Uh, no one, because I can't hit anything with this tail attack. Unless somebody has less than a seven. You have a plus nine to hit. Sorry, uh, not seven, a, a, a ten. I, I'm... I'm trying to do math when I need more caffeine. That's fair. That's fair. I'm perpetually in that state. You're super, super tough, but you've been laying in a bed for a while. All your tentacles are asleep. It's just going to take you a couple rounds to get going. Aram, it's your turn now. Right. And I would see all this happen. I would see these guardians. I would see Oryx pull up his sword and be the proud, noble guardian he was always meant to be. And in my little black heart, it would swell just a bit in this moment as I stand in the middle of them 
as their leader <laughs> and point my wand at this creature. Be gone, creature. You do not know the force you have faced this day. And I shall click that button once more. Okay. D100. D100. That is a five. You cast slow. I cast slow. Like as I'm talking, my voice would get deeper and thicker and all the sounds around me would kind of almost like if, if I'm underwater mm-hmm. as I cast this kind of invisible bubble. Uh, that is a DC 15 save for whatever slow is. Wisdom. Oh, I made that easy. 21. You feel that reach out and this is petty. It took the force of a god and you still killed that god to stop you this spell is a fucking joke it's a parlor trick true state tail tag i want to see one fucking hit god damn it 26 there you go that's better who are we targeting oh uh definitely bentley 100 percent bentley as far as i'm concerned whatever i cast on you which i don't know what that was it just made you far more accurate right <laughs> 17 points of damage, Bentley. Ooh, he's like, have at thee, and then this tail just wham. You extend the arm up, and that just exposes your entire gut. (laughs) (laughs) The tail attack, you don't need to worry about the save, though, the con save, so. I got rocked with that one. I am I am below half. That should not make you more confident because now it's time for a lair action and then Rich's turn. Oh shit. Lair action is definitely pulling Bentley into the water. So DC 14 strength. Seven plus one is eight. Does enlarge help you with? Oh, oh, that's a good, that's a good question. Does enlarge help my strength? I feel like enlarge wants to give you advantage or something. Enlarge, the size, the target's weapon grows to match the size, blah, blah, blah. Does it give me advantage on, uh, advantage on strength? There it is. I figured that was it. Yes. All right. So the first one was a four. 15 plus one is 16. You lucky son of a bitch. I think I grab a hold of like one of your legs and yank you off, like off balance, but you're so big. You like grab the wall. <laughs> yeah. I'm able to just like get one big meaty hand around the edge of the, like of the, around one of these stalactites. Right. And just hold on. Totally. I could really use a little bit of help here, guys. Rich. All right, three attacks on Bentley. Two of them. What's your armor class, Bentley? Uh, 15. Okay, I had a 14, a 13, and a 22. Jesus. So nine plus five, 14 points of bludgeoning with the con save. Have at thee, and then wait, just like I'm being slammed around by this tentacle. <laughs> it's like Hulk grabbing Loki's leg and just like slamming you back and forth. <laughs> exactly. All right, I've got 24 left. I'm looking pretty hurt. Did you make the con save? Uh, con save plus two is going to be 12 plus two is 14. Just barely. <sighs> 14. Rich, uh, wisdom save for the spirit guardians. Wisdom, 23. Okay, half damage on the 3d8. All right, 3d8 half damage. Uh, it's 21 total. So 10 damage to Rich. Uh, Susie, if you got a real big gun and you can wrap this one up, this would be the time for it. Susie's rolling on fire. Oh, yeah. She, she's been carrying the team here. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> clerics. Clerics, baby. Um, I mean, to be fair, also rogues played by competent players. Fair. Oh, I don't want to say Warlocks anything. Warlocks who aren't it's, conflicted. You know. I did want to come back on the show at some point. So I, don't want to <laughs> I don't have much here. Uh, I'm going to go in for a fourth level guiding bolt on uh, our good friend, uh, Mr. Aboleth. Okay, so that's going to be 25 to hit. Yeah, that'll do it. That's a well-guided bolt. All right, that's going to be a 24 damage, radiant damage. Damn. Oh, jeez. Yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> I am ripped up. This physical body is literally coming apart. The divine light that's coming through is searing me. There's burning. There's, like, 
pizza and like flesh is like flaps of it are coming off in different places. It's it's awful. Tail swipe. I'm only gonna attack Bentley at this point. Oh. So twenty one. <laughs> twenty one hits me. Fifteen points of damage, blood Oh shit. Okay. I have nine points of damage left. So I have nine hit points left. My my whole face is swollen. I've clearly broken a couple of ribs. I'm on one knee. I'm not looking good. Just a little telepathic thing that goes out to to the not Bentleys in the group. Yeah. <laughs> He's the enemy. He's gotta be stopped. It's him. He's the problem. Generally, yes. That's all I'm putting out there. Alex, probably your last turn of the fight. So I'm like, like raising up my sword. There's these other tentacles coming out of the water. They're having this like large tentacle fight in the background. The guiding bolt from Alana kind of goes out and hits the the aboleth, and and this this light, the divine light, is breaking it apart from the inside. Um, so I will do 48 of. Um, uh, necrotic damage for 32. Wow. Oh, oh, sorry. Wait one second. 24, 24. I had to delete some other dice from before. <laughs> 24 makes more sense. Is there a save on that? It's only 48 for a fifth level spell slot, but it's basically the witch bolt thing where once he's hit, he can just keep right. going. As I've reached out, you say that he is the problem. This is what the problem is. And you continue pulling me apart. I'm using our telepathic links, because I feel like I'm still kind of in your guys' heads, um, to, to do a few things. To one, to Bentley, I want you to see an image inside of your mind for when you are older and I come back for you. <laughs> Oryx. I want you to see an image of Flumphrey telling you where I'm supposed to be, where, at, where I am. This thing is down there. And the, this voice that was inside your head that said, don't, just kill it. Just kill the Flumphrey. Just kill it. Right? That wasn't me. Flumphrey wanted you to come free me from this voice inside your head. And I will be back. And I still believe in you. And with Alana, I want you to know something, that something is going to happen to you. It's going to feel uncomfortable and it's going to be okay. And I plant in your mind the image of a gem, a glowing gem. It is a psychic repository of knowledge from the time of my civilization. And I... I put a put a an image of exactly where it is. And I tell you you are going to be blessed with the ability to go get it. As I'm ripped apart, all of this gets downloaded into your psyches, and then the body is just rended into nothing. Just falls like rain all around us. It falls like rain. I love it. At the end of this, Orc still has to feel like he killed the wrong thing. <laughs> 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 a big giant arm around you this big enlarged arm as it gives you a bear hug and one wraps around Ilana as well well done my friends well done and I would just kind of shrink down to normal size well, well done and then I collapse because I have like three broken ribs and a concussion <laughs> the glow in the caves starts to fade Ilana you're a cleric and it's the only reason you managed to make it out. Shortly after the fight ends, when you're resting, your skin starts to feel parched and dry. And then it cracks. And then you bleed. And then it starts to tear. Until you get into the water. The disease that an aboleth inflicts you with, you will take... D12 acid damage every 10 minutes for every 10 minutes you are out of water. Jeez. You don't continue re-wetting yourself until you are affected by at minimum a 6th level heal spell which I happen to know at 10th level you do not have access to. Nope. But 
you have the blessing of being able to breathe water and go find that psychic repository. I also have a bag of holding and a ladle. We could simply... <laughs> Are we getting me out of here? We will get you out of here. Just, I'll just keep moistening you. We'll get you to a healer. <laughs> Bentley, you have been beaten and broken. Well, not the first time, frankly. I've earned this kind of beating before. But it still sucks. This place has been ransacked. Mm. It is empty. And there is nothing of worth here. And you're left with just the question... Just as that kind of, like, your eyes just drift over everything, and you think, there is nothing of worth here. And then that voice in your head just turns inward, and it just spirals. Yes, there's nothing of worth here, but there's certainly something of worth down there. So I think all of us, despite ourselves, despite the fact that we could be free, are focused on returning and going even deeper. I am not done. You don't get that. You're not that DM. Shut <laughs> up. <laughs> Alex. Oryx watches what they believed to be their patron, what they thought was always that voice in their head ter- torn apart. And you're left standing there, just kind of watching. You see Bentley fall to the ground beside you. You see... Alana just trying to pick up the pieces of sort of what's happened just as the room gets dark trying to figure out oh shit do we need to find like are there more coming and you feel down in your hand a steady certain weight and you see a sword that still hasn't left you and we're gonna leave it there For more information about us, notes for each episode, and ways you can help support the show, head over to killeverymonster.com. If any of the ideas we've discussed on the show have sparked some of your own, tell us about it on Twitter at KEM Podcast. You'll find me at DJ Malenfant and Aram at Aram Vardian. For ad-free episodes, early releases, bonus episodes, print-ready maps, our new audio DMs notes, and my character sheets for each encounter, head over to patreon.com slash killeverymonster. You can also listen to ad-free episodes and bonus content by subscribing to the show on Apple Podcasts. Our intro theme and many of the sound effects you hear in the show were created by BattleBards. Check them out at BattleBards.com. This episode was produced by Aram Vartian and Dylan Malenfant. I also did the editing. Rich Howard was our guest. You can find him very occasionally on Twitter at Umbral Walker. We were also joined by Susanna Grace. You can find her on Twitter at Susanna Grace. And returning guest from our Flump episode, Alex Boer. You can find him on Twitter at Mr. Alex Boer. And if you are anything like me and all of that information just fell right out of your head, you'll find everything you need at killeverymonster.com. And we'll see you next time for, for Kill, Kill Every, Every Monster. Monster. Attention, fans of fairy tales that are magical, hilarious, and grim. The award-winning Pinna original podcast Grim, Grimmer, Grimmest has new episodes out now. While you've probably heard of the Brothers Grimm, you've never heard these tales told in quite this way. I'm Adam Gidwitz, best-selling and Newbery Honor author of Books for Children, and in Grim, Grimmer, Grimmest, I share the real weird, grim fairy tales with real, weird, hilarious kids. In each episode, you not only get to hear a story, but you also get to enjoy this group guessing what'll happen next, cracking jokes, and sharing their own perspectives on the tales. Also, heckling me. They love to heckle me. The episodes are rated on a scale from grim to grimmer to grimmest, so there's always a great variety of tales to explore with your family. You can listen to Grim, Grimmer, Grimmest now wherever you get your podcasts. And be sure to follow the show so you don't miss new episodes.
This show was produced and edited by Dead Ghost Productions. Find out more about us and all the shows we make at deadghostpro.com. Thank you.